If I ever have a greatest hits album, what I'm about to share with you is going to be the last cut on side one. You know, this is this is the power uh, song that everything revolves around. And when you see me live, this will be the encore that people scream for. Uh, it's something that I seem to rant about a lot, and we see it happen again today. One of the technical technical advisors had a question brought up on my desk. It's the four unit bridge in the double arch uh, tray, in the triple tray. And that's um, a, really kind of a violation of what these trays were designed for. We, we've gone over it you know, a lot of times before. They're great for single crown preps or two single crown preps that are adjacent to each other, but they're really contraindicated for four unit bridges, and especially when it contains the most distal tooth in the arch. In fact, some people don't even like, some dentists don't even like to use it uh, when you're taking an impression of a crown prep where you're doing the most distal tooth uh, in the arch because uh, for the potential of overclosure and things like that. And so this kind of violates uh, both of those things. And so you probably won't be surprised when you see the model. But before we get there, if you're really, and, and look at this as well. If we, we've got our four unit bridge here, the di from the distal abutment to the mesial abutment, and then one other tooth essentially that we've impressed. Uh, obviously, it's gonna be pretty difficult to get a centric stop, let alone uh, any kind of excursions without having an impression that goes around the rest of the arch. If we just look at the margins here, um, you know, at least here I can see some material beyond the margin, which is now you know my uh, personal uh, kind of signpost for whether or not I've taken a good impression. But then in other areas, like on that distal, the end of the impression is the margin as well. And on the mesial, the same thing. It becomes very difficult to trim those dies if we don't have that material beyond the margin. So as we look around, a lot of what we see here does not have that flash material be on the margin. Even just a little like this is really helpful on the buckle aspect of that molar for getting something cleaner. So if you really are in fact hell bent on using um, a double arch tray like this, even though we don't recommend it, I want to introduce you to a tray you may not have seen before from Premier. This is called Alpha, A-L-F-A, -A, Alpha. And if you say, Mike, um, how am I going to remember that? I'll say, well, how do you remember how to get to work in the morning? You just memorize it. But alpha actually stands for alginate, A-L, uh, full arch. I think, I think. I, I may have told myself uh, that, but that's how I remember it anyway. And this is the small version of it. It actually comes in three sizes. There's a small, uh, a medium, and a large. So if this doctor had said, well, I don't like taking two separate impressions, um, you could use a, a, an upper and lower. Instead of being just this small little thing like this, if you extended the impression material over to the other side, at least we would have all those other teeth on the other side. And yes, we'd rather use something a little more uh, sturdy than a plastic tray like this for a four unit bridge. But if you use a stiff, heavy body material in here on both sides, and you can see these little interlocking T's, how the material is going to get uh, hooked in there as well, we stand a much better chance of, of making a restoration that's going to fit and function well. Now again, this tray was designed for alginate, and so typically what I use these for, um, if we're, like we just made a sports guard for my son who plays ice hockey, we fill both sides of this with an alginate replacement material, goes in his mouth, bites together and holds it, and it takes care of two impressions at the same time. And unlike in some upper alginates where your mouth is wide open and you're kind of drooling, there's something nice. I think it's easier actually than taking an upper and lower alginate separately to bite into something and have your teeth close inside the impression. It's much more comfortable feeling for a patient than it is being wide open with this upper alginate in. So my son tends to gag a little bit and does better when we do the upper and lower at the same time. So you could use this for occlusal guards, you could use these for uh, snoring devices like the Silent Night for study models. Anytime you're doing something upper and lower, if I was doing a Silent Night or an occlusal guard, I'm going to use an alginate replacement material in here because alginate's just not quite accurate enough for me um, because we can't get multiple, to multiple pores. I can go pour it right away here in the laboratory, but Dennis will send it from the East Coast wrapped in a wet paper towel. So consider using these alpha trays not only for taking impressions uh, for uh, appliances that are going to cover all the teeth or for study models, but if you really insist on doing a double arch tray for a bridge like this, consider using one of these trays because when you don't, we end up with a case like this one 
where we have the patient bite together. And this is why it, it came to me was they said, well, look, the prep's hitting the opposing tooth. You know, that, can that be happening? And I said, well, it can, but let's hold this up to the light and see if we can see through at the cuspid. And when we hold it up to the light, we can't see any light through there. So obviously the dentist prepared enough where the, the cuspid was in fact not touching the opposing tooth or being very close to touching it as it is here. And, and for that matter, it's, it's not uh, possible for us to be able to mount this accurately from this little, from the bite registration that is contained in this because it's just this one anterior tooth. You know, if there was one more molar back here, we'd have a 50% chance of getting it correct. But all the posterior teeth have been prepped and the only thing that's unprepped here is this lateral incisor and there's just no way we're gonna be able to get that right. This is for a PFM bridge. So you can see, whereas now, you know, we've talked about how we um, design most of our restorations 100 microns out of occlusion to make up for errors in the temporary and to keep you from having to do excessive occlusal adjustment. This is the old style way of doing this uh, on a PFM case like this where we have this foil that's actually 100 microns thick and we can put this over the opposing and create the space that way. Now we do it virtually on any of our CAD CAM restorations but this was in fact for a PFM bridge and so you know unfortunately at this point this is going to have to go back to the doctor. Doctor's going to have to have the patient back in again. And we're going to have to uh, get a new impression, a full arch impression. And uh, you feel bad for the patient having to go through this a, a second time. But there's no way for us to get this correct. You know, we can trim the dies and make the bridge fit. And I suppose we could send, um, you know, a metal framework to the doctor and have them do the bite that way. But we want a tripod. We want to be able to have the bite registration here. Ideally, what we would have is a full upper impression, full lower impression, and a bite registration you know, squirted here and here and against the, just on the literally occlusal third of these preparations and then on the occlusal third of the teeth across from it. Of course, we don't have a tooth uh, across from this one. Uh, so we could send this and use that as part of the bite registration. They actually printed up on our 3D printer a full contour bridge as well, just to be able to check and see how thin that was gonna be. And of course it was, it, this is just an incorrect bite. He did in fact reduce enough. And so this is going to, a poor patient is going to have to come back and have this all done again. If we take a little closer look and zoom in a bit here, this is the solid model from that pore. And you can see on the buckle, I mentioned the areas where there was a little bit of flash beyond the impression. And you can see when the technician goes to trim it, there's a clear demarcation between where the gingiva is and where the tooth is. And that makes it very easy to trim. We come over on the lingual and it gets a little bit tougher because there's no space you can say to yourself, well, I can see where it is. Well, I know, but when you go to trim it, it falls apart as it comes to that area versus actually having a space like we do on the buckle. Uh, well, not, you know, not the entire, well, pretty much the entire buckle from the mesial buckle line angle to the distal buckle. Then on the bicuspid, just the tiniest of spaces right there, just a little bit on the lingual, and then you can see it just kind of blends in. And so our technicians end up doing uh, a lot of guessing when they go to trim this and you know they have to do that day in and day out and and will do it uh, but with a little more attention paid to retraction we can end up with an impression that has a lot more material beyond the margin and we don't need a lot more we just need the same amount that we have here all around those teeth and that's going to allow them to trim some dies that are going to be hopefully highly accurate um, but there just wasn't a ton of retraction that was done uh, in this case. So again, you know, the best way to do this uh, is going to be with a metal tray, full upper, full lower, and a bite registration on these uh, two teeth, even though there's not an opposing one here, but just with a bite registration on the anterior prep and the tooth across from that, we're going to be able to work with that considering that we have all these other natural teeth on the other side that are going to be uh, in occlusion as well. And so that's the right way to do this. Uh, again, if you in, do it, want to really take a, a shortcut and do a double arch uh, impression technique, consider using uh, the alpha tray, even though it was designed for alginates and alginate replacements. Uh, if you really want to use that technique here, you can get polyvinyl in both sides of this. And with that full arch impression, like I said, at least we're, we're going to have a much better chance of making a bridge that fits uh, and functions well in protrusive and lateral excursions.